In this video, we're going to talk about the p-series. So let's say if we have the series from 1 to infinity of 1 over n raised to the p. Now, if p is greater than 1, the series will converge. If p is less than or equal to 1, then the series will diverge. And so that's pretty straightforward. So let's work on some example problems. Let's start with the harmonic series, 1 over n. So what is p in this example? Well, p is the invisible number, 1. And so if p is equal to 1, we know that the series is going to diverge. Now, let's try some other examples. So let's say that a sub n is 1 over n squared. So for this particular series, will it converge or diverge? What would you say? So we can clearly see that p is equal to 2, which means that p is greater than 1, and so the series converges. So here's another example that you could work on. Let's say that a sub n is n raised to the negative pi. So feel free to pause the video and determine if this series is going to converge or diverge. Now first, we need to rewrite it. We need to put it in this form. So therefore, we want n to be not in the numerator, but in the denominator of the fraction. So let's move it to the bottom. And as we move it from the top to the bottom, the exponent, negative pi, is going to change to positive pi. So now it's in the appropriate form. And so we can see that p is equal to pi. So if p is equal to pi, is p greater than 1, or is it less than or equal to 1? Now keep in mind, pi is approximately 3.14. And 3.14 is greater than 1. So p is greater than 1, which means that the original series converges. Now let's move on to our next example. So let's say that a sub n is going to be the fifth root of n squared. So what do you think? Is it going to converge or diverge? So just like the last example, we need to rewrite the expression. So we need to change it from radical form and write it as a rational exponent. So this is the same as n raised to the 2 over 5. And this is over 1, so we need to put n in the denominator of the fraction. So we can rewrite this as 1 over n raised to the negative 2 over 5. So we can clearly see that p is equal to that number. So if p is equal to negative 2 over 5, will the series converge or diverge? Which of these inequalities applies to this example? So if p is negative 2 over 5, that means that p is less than or equal to 1. So therefore, the series diverges. Try this one. So let's say if we have n to the negative 2.4 plus 8 times n raised to the negative 1.6. So is the series convergent or divergent? So I'm going to rewrite the expression and separate it into two parts. So we can write it as n to the negative 2.4 and plus another series from 1 to infinity. And then this is going to be 8 times n raised to the negative 1.6. 
So this becomes 1 over n to the 2.4. And then this is going to be 1 over n to the 1.6. So let's analyze each one individually. So for the first series, we can see that p is 2.4. And for the second one, it's 1.6. Now, if p is greater than 1, then the series will converge. So if this series converges, it has the sum is a finite value. And this series also converge. So if we add two finite numbers, the result would be a finite number. So the original series, which we had at the beginning, we could say that it's converging it's going to converge to a finite value. Consider the infinite series 1 plus 1 over square root 2 plus 1 divided by the square root of 3 plus 1 divided by the square root of 4 and so forth. So is this series, is it convergent or divergent? The first thing we need to do is write a general expression for each term in a sequence. So basically, we need to write an expression for a sub n. We're going to start with the first term, n equal 1, and go to infinity. Now, notice that the value of the numerator doesn't change. So to write the formula for a sub n, because that doesn't change, we're just going to put a 1. The second thing that doesn't change is the square root symbol. So we're just going to write square root, but the number inside the square root does change. For the first term, it's going to be a 1. For the second term, it's 2. For the third term, it's 3. And so for the nth term, it's going to be n. So a sub n is 1 over the square root of n. So now that we have this general expression, all we need to do is put it in the appropriate form. So the square root of n is the same as n raised to the 1 half. So now we have the value of p. p is equal to 1 half. So therefore, we could say that p is less than 1, which means that the series is divergent. Let's try another similar example. So let's say we have a series that looks like this. Is it convergent or divergent? So let's begin by writing a general expression for a sub n. So we can say this is going to be 1 over the cube root of 1. So the top number doesn't change, and the cube root symbol is the same. Now let's focus on numbers 1, 4, 9, and 16. What do you notice? These numbers are perfect squares. This is 1 squared, that's 2 squared, that's 3 squared, that's 4 squared. So therefore, we could say that we have n squared inside the radical. So then this whole thing is equal to the series, starting from 1, going to infinity, of 1 over the cube root of n squared. So now we can rewrite this expression as a rational exponent. So this is going to be n to the 2 thirds. So therefore, p is equal to 2 over 3, which means that p is less than 1. And so the series diverges. Let's try one more example. So go ahead and determine if this series is going to converge or diverge. So just like before, we need to write a general expression. So the stuff that doesn't change is the 1, the fraction, and the cube root symbol. The numbers that are changing are these numbers, 2, 3, 4. So because it goes up by 1, it's just going to be n. So we have n on the outside and n on the inside. So we have the series from 1 to infinity, 1 over n times the cube root of n. 
So will this series converge? What would you say? n times the cube root of n. That's basically n times n to the one third. And 1 plus 1 third is 4 thirds. So thus we have this series. 1 over n raised to the 4 over 3. So therefore p is equal to 4 over 3, which is basically 1.3 repeating. So therefore p is greater than 1 for this example. And so we could say that the series converges.